right, I won't select the cached version this time. Get the system up sooner. Right, so once again, configure the graphical environment, or rather the keyboard more specifically. Ensure there's no problems with wrong symbols being typed in. And get the prompt up and some internet access. Okay, so let's go back to the Linux from Scratch page into Beyond Linux from Scratch, read online, and want the latest version. And I know I've got this page up several times and not used it, but now I do need it. Oh, is this the page I need? Yes, this is the page that gets linked to from the wireless page. So it mentions here about firmware, which is what we need now. Um, there's firmware for all different devices, um, network devices. Um, tend to be one of the biggest users for firmware. Um, but as you can see, there are some for wired. And as it says there, it may be to enable things such as Bluetooth and so on. <clears throat> so let's go down to about two thirds of the way down. Yeah, network interfaces. And this is the message we saw. As it says here, you can grep the word firmware. Uh, let's do that on this boot. And you can see this is um, probably exactly the same as what we saw, apart from the fact, as you can see, that the firmware has been loaded correctly and more to the fact that it's used the TMSC one. TMSC, yes, TMSC one. Um, and it hasn't bothered loading the other one. It could be the TMSC is the official firmware and maybe the other one is like an open source version um, that's a possibility why there's two different ones and they're alternate ones um, but yeah we got the errors obviously because we didn't have any firmware loaded now we could cheat and load it off the gen 2 but I'll show you where to get it from uh, because it's all in here if we go to this link here it takes us to the kernel org page and it's got basically an archive file with all the wireless uh, firmware that's available so if we copy the latest one um, we'll have to download this here at the moment because we haven't set up the LFS environment so that's got The, oh, sorry, yes, this is not all the firmware, I beg your pardon. This has got the regulatory files that we need. So if we go back here, you can see that it says we need the regulatory DB file, which is 
that one there and the regulatory db.p7s which is that one there so we need those two files out of that system um, and then we need the actual um, firmware for the um, Wi-Fi system itself Um, now where was this? Uh, let's go back to the top. Oh yes, that's it. It's right at the very top. Okay. So preferably you can get it from yes, I know it was a Git repository. From this first link is probably the best place to get it, but there is a backup at the LFS um, server as well. So yeah, at the top of the firmware page, this first link will take you here. And then all you need to do is to search for that directory which we took note of when we booted, which was RTL uh, Wi Fi. That's obviously a file, so we'll search for the next occurrence, which is that one there. You can see it's a directory. If we go into that, you can see there's all these RTL 8192 files. And the one we want is RTL8192 CUFW TMSC, which is that one there. Now, don't make the mistake that I made initially and just click on that and download that because all that does, it takes you to that page and you'll, you'll end up downloading that page. That's not what you want. What you want to do is to follow this line over here and click on this plain link here and that will download the raw uh, binary file which is what you do want so that's downloaded that we've got the regulatory um, db and db.p7s file so we should have everything we need now to install into Linux from scratch so the last thing to do is to well not the last thing to do the next thing to do is to actually uh, load up Linux from scratch again as we did before so let's get another tab open LFS 12.0 back to chapter 7 preparing a kernel file system so export LFS equals MNT LFS make that directory because obviously it doesn't exist at the moment we're in a live environment. Mount slash dev slash sda2 is my root onto LFS. Now I can do the virtual file systems. This if command, and now I can go and move on to root. I won't put the make flags in because there's nothing else to compile at this point. Okay, I'll need a new another new tab to copy these files that we've downloaded. Um, I'll actually move this file onto the LFS system. I'll put that into sources BLFS and if we go to home gen2 I imagine that went to downloads yep there's that binary file so I'm going to move that as well um, into uh, MNT LFS sources BLFS as well now, if I go back here, I'm going to put them, those files where they actually belong. So, in every Linux, there's a lib firmware directory where firmware exists. I'm not sure if it's mandatory that it has to be there, um, but I've never known it that I can think of. I've never seen it anywhere else. So, if we change to lib... Uh, to a listing of firmware you can see that's a directory called firmware 
If we change into it, there's nothing in there at the moment. So the first thing we've got to do, if you remember that firmware for the actual adapter was in a subdirectory. So we need to make that directory first. RTL Wi-Fi was the name of that directory. If we change into that, now we can copy from sources VLFS the RTL binary blob. Copy that into there. Uh, copy CP. So that's the correct binary file. It's in its correct location in lib firmware RTL Wi-Fi. We now need to copy the um, regulatory DB file. So I need to extract that again because I only copied the archive across. So let's push the directory and extract that file. Go back and we'll copy from sources BLFS wireless reg db and we want that file to be copied into lib firmware it doesn't need to go in a directory and the other one is the db.p7s copy that into lib firmware and that should be it now i haven't copied the other RTL 8192CUFW.bin file because oh, A, I know it's not needed from testing and B, I can see that Gen 2 hasn't used it either. But if, for example, there was a problem with that file, then I would have to go back and download it. Download it. And normally, I would have downloaded both of them in case I did need it. But knowing full well that I don't need it, I've not bothered this time. But let's just check what we've done. We've created uh, a directory called RTL Wi-Fi and in that we've copied the binary blob because that's where it's expected to be seen and we've also copied these two regulatory files which are required to set the correct frequencies uh, for the country I'm in basically. So that should be it. Um, all we need to do now is to come out of this uh, and shut this all down and reboot again and hopefully the configuration is complete. Uh, let's unmount LFS again. Let's check that's all gone. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and we'll just reboot. Unplug the live USB again. 